What is going on and welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. The Washed Up Crew is back again. I'm Ramsey Abushala, editor of UrbanPitch.com. As always, to my right is the director of the Vibes himself, what Julio Montalosa. Julio, how you doing? How you doing? Excited. I'm, re- I'm really happy about this one. Uh, just looking at your jersey, you can pretty tell who we're bringing on, but I'm um, excited about this one just because I have a lot of friends that are from the Bay Area. So this is okay. me about to about to talk a little shit to them by saying, like, oh. <laughs> "Look what I did! You guys didn't do it." <laughs> right. So I'm yeah. excited about this one. <laughs> yeah. So so I mean, like you're going like you, you see the jersey. Um, we got we got a very special guest on on today's episode. Uh, he's the co-founder of the Oakland Roots, Adris Argandawal. Adris, thank you so much for 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 joining us. Casey, guys, thank you so much for having me. I wish I was there in person, kicking it with y'all, but. Uh, busy mid season yeah. dealers here in the Bay Area. So yeah. you know. Yeah, we gotta make we gotta make the in person meetup happen maybe um when you're in LA playing the Galaxy or, or OCSC. Or we might have um, to go up there. Yeah. I, I, or, or we could go up I've there. I've been telling you I've been wanting to go to a game. Um just like just being a fan from the outside. Um I really want to go to a game. Yeah. Well we gotta we, let, yeah. let's 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 do it. We got the we got the kits. Um, or I, you I got the kid, yeah. Kid, but, I'll get my, yeah. I'll get my, <laughs> yeah. I'll get my <laughs> But um, before we get into the soccer stuff, um, you're a DJ, and music is a big part of what we do. Julio and I, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we we love our music. Um, so before we get into the, you know, the the, the ins and outs and the X's and O's of of, of soccer and the roots, uh, we just want to get your thoughts a little bit on the on the Bay Area music scene because um, obviously oh, it's yeah. it's such a unique it's such a unique um, um, like. Uh, part of especially i think rap hip-hop and rap where mm-hmm. you see um like even even as late as like the 2000s you know rap was very much um regional where you had you know west coast had their own sound east coast had their own sound midwest and the south you know kind of had their own sound as you know things started to grow and the internet yeah. and whatnot the the sound started um melding together you had asap rocky who's who's you know influenced by you know the the houston houston sound and he's come from new york yeah. um so so that the regional era has kind of died off but i i still think that the bay especially oakland has has maintained that kind of regional um feel to it what why in in your eyes as you know someone is, is integrating that music scene um what, mm-hmm. what makes the barrier rap scene so special today's episode is brought to you by bet online Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today, or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe50. That's B L E A V five zero to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. I'm glad you kicked it off with that. I will start off by saying that I love DJing. I whether or not people call me a DJ or not <laughs> is up to them. Right. Um, but I I love to curate energies, man. That's the way I see it. Um, my, I have family, my cousin DJ Shabazz, DJ Rafi, who's actually our official uh, Oakland Roots DJ, who are way more qual- qualified DJs than I am. <laughs> um, I like to curate sounds for friends and family and, you know, occasionally here and there I'll do something. But, you know, music is a big part of my DNA, man. Just in general, um, I've been raised on it. It's, it's been in my blood. Uh, my family, obviously, being from Afghanistan, you know, they are heavy, heavy advocates for the arts and cultures. Um, and so I was raised on eclectic sound and different sound. And I remember when my dad first had, had come, right, I'm, I'm, I was born in Oakland, raised in the Bay Area. It wasn't just the Bay Area sound that I was accustomed to. I mean, my pops would be playing, um, you know, Gypsy Kings while we're on the way to school. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, like well, so shout out I the Gypsy Kings, man. Yanni, or you know, and, and I was exposed to a wide range of of different palettes when it comes to music. And a, I think that's really crucial for someone that's in music is to not get siloed into a specific genre. Mm-hmm. And then B, to your question about Bay Area music, man. Um, I mean, the Bay Area sound is Oakland sound. Let me just 
be very, mm -hmm. very explicit about <laughs> right. that. Yeah. A lot of people get very, very confused about, you know, this sound and that sound and, you know, Bay Area, uh, the hyphy movement. I'd be very clear by saying I probably, some folks would be upset, but like this shit is open sound and has originated from here. Um, it's taught a lot of people the game and talk about the game. Actually, Tupac in a clip had mentioned that if he claims anywhere, he claims Oakland because Oakland taught him the game. And that's word for word, like what he said in his, in his audio clip. And I think there, there's a lot to that, whether it's Digital Underground or, you know, Mac Dre, yeah. uh, Mr. Fab, who's, you know, Prince of Oakland, you know, Prince of the Town, um, E-40, who, you know, obviously Vallejo, rep San Francisco, uh, the sports teams, et cetera. But like all these cats comprised a very unique sound that you don't get anywhere else in the world. I mean, too short, bro, the list goes on yeah. and on and yeah. on, right? No pun intended. <laughs> um, and that's like, and, and, and what we need to realize is that current hip hop and current culture is heavily influenced by Oakland yeah. and Bay Area sound, period. And you can find it in tidbits of every artist nowadays, you know, whether you like it or not. And then you can even date that back to funk music and soul music that was the origin of hyphy mm -hmm. and was the origin of experimentation. And a lot of it was stemmed from Oakland and the things that have come out of here musically and culturally. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's heavy. Um, it's a big part of our game day experience. We play a lot of amazing music at our games and we do it unapologetically. We bump, you know, super loud. And some people get upset about <laughs> that, but you know, it's how do we take a game day experience and turn it into something that A, people remember, but B, um, tied to the culture arts and identity of where they're staying at where they rest their head every night you know it has to feel familiar otherwise you know you ain't got you ain't got something authentic right Definitely. um so yeah man super important to us as as a as a club super important to me in terms of my own identity i've gone dumb so much that like i think my nose bled at some point <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know this is it's it's heavy on us and um it influences me a lot in the way that we speak in the way that we move um and then the way that we we kind of dissect and understand music bro for sure no definitely and you guys are real fans about your bay area artists i don't think it's a other city that reps or artists as hard as you guys do especially your underground artists like your jay stylins your filthy rich like you guys uh let me tell you a quick story uh i'm, I'm from la so i went college first day first day of college i had a sweet mate um, he was from the uh, from Oakland, so I came in with my skinny in, skinny jeans, polo, and my snapback. It's 2010. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah. of course, like he he looked at me, he starts laughing, like, "Hey, who is this guy? Like, he was with your skinny jeans. He's from Oakland." But like, whatever. We started getting we started getting cool, and he had a he had he had a CD case. So let's I'll tell you my age. But like, he had a CD case, and it just said Bay Area yeah. slaps. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> so he, yeah. every day like he would bump his like. Uh, he had a song, uh, "Stay Strapped" by uh, I believe uh, Jay Stylin featuring Filthy Rich, and he okay, yeah. This guy, man, like everybody knew, like if you want to get like hot music from the Bay, this guy was the place to go because he, yeah, I, I, it was like this big, the CD yeah. case, and it said Bay Area slaps, and that to this day, man, this <laughs> this guy came in saying, "Yee, what's up, Kenny?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This guy was yeah, man. man. I mean, should we we hear it in? some influences of drake and yeah. you know even other artists you feel me and the beginning you know, of yg no shortage yeah exactly exactly yeah i mean and you know there's other artists like g easy who right. have really taken like the bay area oakland sound to a international level mm -hmm. and you know we love seeing that but then you know people from the bay oakland they move a little different too man i mean you know, the I am Sue's of the world, the, the big riches. I mean, these guys like, bro, Zion and I, you know, may he rest in peace. Bro, RIP. Um, Latif, the truth speaker. I mean, the list goes on, bro. There's there's artists out of here that aren't just about the music. They're really about the movement and they really give back to their towns, their cities. Um, and that's a part of the reason why I'm so in love with, hey, being from here, living here. Um, but just proudly repping it and trying to make sure that everything that I do is, 
is not in violation of that code, mm -hmm. but is in, in line in that we're paying respects and that we're moving in, in tandem with the OGs because these guys have laid the foundation for who the identity of Oakland, the greater Bay Area is. So we, we, we are very, very prideful of it, um, as you know, um, and we wear it on our sleeves, man, for sure. Do you think the the Bay Area has showed most of these under uh this uh unsigned artists how to how to basically make money? Because back then the Bay Area artists were the ones selling it. Mm. You you see these guys, I'm saying like bringing back to Filthy Rich, wearing a big big chain and having no deal, but just selling CDs in the back of their trunks. They basically were the first yeah. unsigned artists and showed a lot of people how to do it. I know Tyga uh, said like Tyga YG said it until they went to the Bay, they knew how to hustle their music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there's a mentality here, bro, where you got to support each other. Feel me? And if you can't bloom where you're planted, then you you won't be able to make it anywhere. You feel me? And so that that's my philosophy. Is like you can't look at your circumstance and be upset about it. You have to look at your circumstance and find ways to uh, blossom and bloom despite maybe hardship or difficulty. And I think these artists in the Bay Area have really been a model and an example for shit you know what i don't gotta go to la i don't gotta go to new york city like i can do really well in my home city and hometown put them on my back give back to them and guess what we have a saying here man you show the town love it will show the love right back right and so that happens in every regard if you're tapped in if you're present in the community you're you're giving back you're, you're showing love they're going to show up to your shows. They're going to pay for your music. They're going to buy your merch. They're going to do all that shit, right? So that's how artists survive. And yeah. I think if you could do that locally, then that means you have you have something special and you just got to find more of those people globally, right? And that's that's it. So um, we see it a lot, man. We see it a lot. Hyper-localized, you know, deeply rooted, rooted in the community. Um, and that's the, the way to success sometimes. You ain't got to be tour in the world to be successful right. you know I mean? yeah yeah and i think um you know you touched on a lot of things that um i feel like the roots do stand for and that, that the same approach that um you know um a lot of oakland artists are using um the roots had, had, had done a well so so can you talk about that a little bit um when you were starting the club what approach did you want to take and, and create something that was unapologetically mm -hmm. oakland that you know that you that you wanted to be proud of that you could, you know, have, have, the, have, like you said, you show, you show the town love, the town's going to love you back. Um, so what, exactly. um, you know, what was that approach? What was the original vision and how, you know, now, uh, however many years later, um, how has that like changed from like the, or, or, or stayed the same from that initial vision? Mm, right. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to say a lot of people, they say, we love your brand. We love the merch. We love all this stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I said, thank you so much. You just thank Oakland instead. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> at the end of the day, like we really ain't done shit, bro. Like the only thing we've really done is brought really impactful, amazing people to the table and just listen to them. Um, in the early stages, when we try to do a team in Oakland, um, I remember the co-founders were up on a stage just taking heat from everyone in the community about what a professional soccer team should look like. We had no idea. You know, we were just chopping about it. We're a bunch of local Bay Area cats, um, you know, some born in Oakland, some not, but we cared about the vision of the town and something special, you know, existing here for the community, especially when teams have packed their bags and left when it shit don't work out, i.e. the Las Vegas Raiders right. and right. Um, uh, the Warriors. Um, and, you know, Warriors have done a great job of staying tapped in and, and uh, connected Steph has done a great job of doing positive things in the community. Clay has, Dre has, I mean, the, all these guys, right? They care about Oakland because they were here at some point. Mm. But the, the model in which we tried to build was one that was very European-esque in that it was community built, not uh, billionaire built. Yeah. Again, bro, like I don't look like Mark Cuban or <laughs> I'm, I'm not any of these cats. Like I'm just really a first generation Afghan American you know, byproduct of refugees trying to figure shit out for myself so that I can make the foundation not only for myself, but people that look like me. Um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Afghan refugees coming from Afghanistan and they ain't never seen anyone, you know, in America, specifically in a soccer environment, um, you know, yet this was brand new to them and they were able to come to the stadium and see someone that looked like them 
in a position of leadership early on in their days in America, which led them to believe that they can accomplish whatever it is that they want to, right? So it's these types of things, which is laying a foundation that we're really passionate about. We're very big on staying present in the community and staying uh, authentic and doing that by listening to people, right? Um, when you have Oakland in your name, um, you have to listen, despite how difficult or sometimes you know, ridicule is you know, thrown your way, it is a part of the responsibility, right? It comes with territory when you claim the town. So um, when you claim it, you gotta, you gotta live up to the expectations. Those expectations are be present, give back, you know, be purpose oriented and always keep the town in mind with every, every move. And that's why we have the tagline open first always, you know, we try to make every decision with that lens, you know, we're not perfect, but, you know, we tend to try to always push that objective, no matter, you know, how hard or difficult the circumstances, right? Um, so we, you know, we, in early days, we, we said we want to build a, a purpose-oriented organization. We wanted to zag while everyone else was zigging. Right. We wanted to lead with design. We wanted to be, uh, you know, a cool club like i'm tired of seeing corny clubs with corny merch and all that you know i, I want to develop something like people would want to wear in the streets and then feel proud of wearing not just because it's a soccer team but because it's it's representative of their ideas and their culture you know and that worked in the early stage man some people even called us a t-shirt company <laughs> and you know not a real soccer team and whatnot and then um i'd like to say for those people um, we have never not made the playoffs in our history. So, right. you know, I uh, guess goes to prove that, yeah, you, that just goes to prove that like you can build some dope shit and still win and still sell t-shirts and still be in the community. Um, and that don't come with preconceived notions bro. Uh, we're here to challenge those assumptions and it's been working ever since. So I'm really, really blessed. I will say to have an executive team, a team in general ownership group, of investors that believe in what we're trying to accomplish. You know, we are the first club in America to commit to common goal, which means we donate 1% mm -hmm. of our ticket salaries and um, staff, uh, our ticket sales and staff salaries to uh, social impact causes here locally. You know, we're proud to have spearheaded the anti-racist project, which is now being adopted by many clubs throughout America. Um, we are part of the Play Proud campaign that Common Goal had set forth to really shatter you know prejudices and barriers and boundaries and really try to create racial and gender justice in the game that really is segregated um, this is a suburban uh, pay-to-play model and we are trying to really change the game and and bring color to um literally and right, metaphorically right. speaking to the game and so um that's that's us man we we leaned in hard and that's my philosophy in life is like, if you're going to do something, do it, do it right and do it hard um, and don't come cut back on it. You know what I mean? So, and now we're here three years later, four years later in the USL championship, mid season, a little past mid season. Um, it's truly humbling you guys for sure. Oh, definitely. Talk about being in the community. Uh, I know I'm Salvadorian, so I know Oakland has a big Salvadorian community. One of the players that you have in your team now is part of the national team. Um, and yeah, I, and I believe, Javi Mariona. Yeah, and his yep. and his dad is a legend in the national team. One of the players that went to the World Cup. So, um, just researching him, just coming back to your team. Once I heard that one percent, I'm like donating back to the social causes. That's what made me even a bigger fan. Um, like like you said, I I, I love where I'm from. Um, and some any anytime I see a club doing that, it's just mad respects. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you. And you know, I, I will say. Um, our Project 510 boys, our development team, they are 100% Bay Area, born, raised, whatever it is. We were the youngest team in the USL uh, League to, to feel the team and go to the first round of playoffs. Youngest team in the USL to do that. And it's all Bay Area talent, of which Javi... Uh, Lorenzo are part of the El Salvadorian uh, national pool. Um, and, you know, it's it just to me that goes to show that like Bay Area is full of amazing talent and we're just barely tapping into it. We've been in existence for four years and we've been able to 
field the youngest team in the USL League two to make it to the playoffs, right? And for me, that just goes to show that the, the talent here can compete at the highest level the next five, six years, y'all. Mark my words, you're going to see the next pool of national team players come by way of the Bay Area in a way that, I mean, just has never happened. And I, I think it's that's a part of the motivation for me is like 10 years, 20 years from now, how do we see like the next national team come out of Oakland slash Bay Area? You know, and that's why we have Project 510. That's why we have um, all the, the tools that we're developing. And I'm not just talking the men's side. I'm talking women's as well. We just yeah. launched Oakland Soul, yep, yep. Um, our women's side. And so um, the women's game for me is highly important given my sister's connection. Yeah. You know, played at Santa Clara, captain, was on an Afghanistan national soccer team. And as a professional, you know, she was able to play professionally but didn't get paid shit. Mm. And retired and had to start her life over because – playing professionally as a woman didn't didn't provide the foundational level that say it would for a man and for me that's a fucked up b you know i had to do something about it so oakland soul is is a way for us to approach that change and be an advocate for it while still being dope and cool and design focused and, and whatnot so yeah yeah we, we did a story uh we did an interview with halai and a photo shoot um I think when she was here in LA, um, not too long ago, yeah. a couple of years ago, um, and I thought I thought that's that her kind of story and was was just so interesting to hear. But is she uh, coming out of retirement uh, yeah. to, to suit up for the soul? Or, or yeah, always, yeah, is we breaking news? She's coming out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Care to hear first? You got you got to talk to lie. <laughs> yeah, she's at Nike right now. She's I think she's doing well. She's happy and content with where the trajectory of life is going. And um, trust me, man. She she could shove them up any time. And yeah, I think she was saying like the other day there was a, a corporate like a game or something and she won MVP yeah. um, in front of Marcus Rashford who came and visited wow. uh, Nike. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I don't doubt it. Like it's, <laughs> it's still a baller. Um, once once a baller, always a baller, right? Yeah. That's the way it goes. I yeah. think I think they had that event right here in Playa Vista, if I'm not mistaken. The, the Nike Possibly. Event? Yeah, the, the, the Nike. Oh, okay. Nike, they have a Nike uh, HQ right there. Uh, Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he yeah, was. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was in L.A. I think. But yeah. I don't know which event it was. Now, yeah. they have a little cool little soccer field there. It's right next to L.A. Fitness, where I used to work out. Cause I work where out. I used to work out. Yeah, where <laughs> I haven't used gone to work in out. a minute. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a real nice area, like real, real nice soccer field they have right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned so so you mentioned when you were, you were building the team. Um, obviously, you took the community route. You wanted to be present in the community. You wanted to build that. Um, you know, engagement with the, um, before you even had, you know, the, the, the moving parts of the, the club, um, mm-hmm. you know, to the point where people were calling you guys, you know, a t-shirt company. Um, mm-hmm. How important was that to you? And, and now I think you see a lot, a lot of other teams starting to either one, shore up their community presence, if they're already like established teams or two oh. teams that are looking to get started. Um, saying like, hey, you know, before, you know, we, we figure out the, the front office, the, the players, you know, who, who we're going to go right. for on the pitch, we got to get situated off the pitch. And, you know, yeah. it seems like Angel City has have, have done a really good job in, uh, in the NWSL and you've seen what they've done with their community. They're selling out games. Um, and then sure. LAFC, I think, is another uh, really good op- um, example of, you know, just how powerful it is to make connections with the community, get in touch with the right people, um, you know, be about what you talk what what you like preach right um so right. how important was that to you guys and i, I don't know if, if you were lafc started first did you take some stuff from them did, do you think they took some stuff for you <laughs> like uh, uh yeah so this is an interesting topic so what was the first team you met you said detroit city is that what you said um, angel city angel, angel city, city. Yes, detroit angel city, city detroit city okay. has also done a really good job too. Also one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so yeah the peel back layers man it's funny is um when i when we first were getting started the only pathway to a league was MPSL mm-hmm. Pro. Mm-hmm. Like MPSL is Division Four or Five. I, I, I don't really understand exactly where they land on sure. the pyramid nowadays. But when we were were trying to get in, they were trying to develop a league called MPSL "quote unquote" Pro that was kind of in the Division Three level ish. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, didn't pan out. It didn't work out for our club to join that league. But we joined NISA, yeah. NISA, yeah. Mm-hmm. National Independent Soccer Association. Um, and a bit, mind you, like before we even existed, Detroit city existed. Yeah. yeah. Um, LAFC was literally just launching. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say in the first like year, two years of its inception. 
And when we were mood boarding and when we were having discussions about what types of clubs motivate us, we took clubs like Detroit City, clubs like LAFC, and we had them on a mood board. <laughs> and we talked about, you know, Detroit City does a great job of activating community and moving against the grain, right? Yeah. Um, when people are moving this way, they move that way. We love that mentality, that underdog, blue collar. I mean, Oakland and Detroit, there's a lot of similarities, sure. you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and so we took that inspiration, which was community centric, community first. They were a viable club. They were sustainable. They were building facility, indoor facilities and doing cool things with their club and were selling out. And so early days, we were looking at them and we used to get in touch with Sean Mann and others who mm -hmm. are at the club to get insight on, hey, how'd you guys do this, et cetera. And then, so we took good things from that club. And then we took good things from LAFC, which for me was the lean into the urbanization of sports, right? Like, this doesn't have to be just about, you know, a squeaky clean uh, visual of a club or its audience. Like, right. you can be urban, you can be street, you can be proud of being black and brown, and that brand works. You know what I mean? Like, how they announced the players was this, like, you know, new era fitted hat. Right. And they just yeah. Like, look up, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, most clubs ownership would probably be like, Oh no, like it has to be a formal announcement. Like they have to score a goal and like, <laughs> you know, you have highlights. They were just like, no, we're announcing Gareth Bale with like looking up, you know what I mean? Like, mm. so it was that type of stuff that really inspired me. And I was like, this is, this is open. Like we have to really lean into being different like other clubs have done. And we have to lean into design and merchandise in a way that like LAFC has tapped into that, yeah, right? Yeah. Where they've made it cool to rock the merch and not corny or like just for game days, you right. know? And so, and there's countless of other examples out there in the world on a global level. You know, we looked at Juventus and the Inter Milan's, and what they do on the fashion side, right? Like they are a, a team, but then people rock Inter Milan and Juventus during fashion week, sure right yeah. and also nowhere fc was on our yeah. food board yeah. you know yeah shout out to diego Moscone. i mean yeah. that whole team ted uh, you know there's so many guys there that are just killing the game when it comes to no one else in soccer are thinking on that level of design aesthetic period right. yeah. and so you know and these guys come from like louis vuitton and supreme level yeah. right you know right. type connections so they're bringing that knowledge to the game and they're doing it in a way where like you know, billionaire owners have no connection to the streets like that, sure. you know? Yeah. And so again, I'm naming a lot of different components, but all these cats were on the mood board. Mm -hmm. I'll even shout out another one in De La Fuente FC, which is like a rapper from Spain who has like this like pseudonym soccer club called De La Fuente FC and he drops dope ass merch. And so there's all of these examples that we kind of hodgepodge together. And then we really funneled it in a way that, represented oakland in its diversity we leaned into being different and we actually took it i'd say five to ten notches deeper and really leaned into community in a way that these clubs have dabbled into mm -hmm. but like why not commit one percent of our ticket sales right. why not commit to being an anti-racist soccer team why not include diversity in our front office right like you know we have two black men in positions of soccer coaching power um, that I think are probably two of five in the entire United States at this level. You know, um, we have a, a woman at the helm who was our president, yeah. right? I mean, these are the things that other clubs are either A, shied away from, or B, are just too scared to do. And we've really been able to lean in, A, because of who we are as people, but B, because of like, most importantly, the town that we represent. Yeah. So. Hopefully that answers the question a bit long winded, but no, I think yeah. I think that covered that was great. That yeah, that covered all the the the, um, the bases I think, and um, you know you mentioned guys like uh, Nowhere FC who end up you know creating helping create the the Venezia jerseys from last year, which you That's know right. were, were big, yeah. big big time hits, and they're doing stuff with Jonathan David now, and so um, there's just so much influence that fashion has. Um, on, on, on the game and, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, music is one part and fashion is something that we, we cover as well. And you, uh, linking up with, with Oakland dish who, you know, is another kind of 
uh, Oakland staple uh, with with a lot of the streetwear um, releases that they do. Um, what made you reach out to them? Um, what was that partnership like, and how how has that gone? Because I mean, I think that's been a, a, another significant part of of, of your success. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a big believer in cross pollination and collaboration. I think that if people can think they, they got it on their own or they can do it on their own, they're bullshitting because, <laughs> you know, you can't exist on an island by yourself. You have to be able to collaborate with people. And um, they were a great example, man. When we first launched, I remember my first meeting with them. I was like, look, we haven't even kicked the ball yet. <laughs> like, this is just an idea. We barely have any funding. But trust us in this in this process of like trying to take merchandise to a new place. And Angela and Aaron um, and the whole Planish crew were so re receptive to the idea of supporting and backing a locally kind of authentically grown Oakland organization. And for folks that are listening that don't know who Oaklandish are, they are a longstanding Oakland merchandising organization based in Oakland, in many retail locations, and they basically bottled up the pride that people have in Oakland and created a merchandising brand that gives back and that really just represents the community perfectly. Um, and so we partnered with them at an early stage to A, get the message of Roots out quickly, but B, spread the message that this isn't just about soccer, this is about Oakland. And a lot of our designs didn't have soccer balls in them. Right. They didn't have, you know, like design specific elements that made people aware of the sport. Rather, it was about Oakland and that's how we got into the marketplace really quickly. I'd say, bro, within the first two, three years, even now still it happens, you know, one in every 10 people I see are rocking roots, yeah. you know, some know what it is and know that it's a soccer team. And then there's some cats that are just like, what? It's a soccer <laughs> team. I'm just rocking it. Cause I love, uh, I love yeah. Oakland. Um, but when they're rocking it, they inevitably become a, a fan of the team because they already own the gear and the merch. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so Oaklandish really helped support us in that in that effort, man. They they have hundreds and thousands of people in their database, and they helped us reach those people overnight, which oftentimes I mean, by ourselves would have taken years and years to develop. So uh, supremely grateful of that um, relationship, and you know was a was a key part of our trajectory in the early stages. And we're excited to still be with them to this day, and we'll continue to because it's been a, a fruitful relationship for sure. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned like a lot of it wasn't soccer centric. Like there wasn't like mm -hmm. anything in there to to make it like apparently you know a soccer club made this. Um, and I think one of my biggest pet peeves, and, and you see a lot of um, particularly MLS clubs do this in their in their crests where they have to throw in right. a soccer ball in there somewhere. It's like, <laughs> yeah. dude. <laughs> like you don't see this anywhere else like <laughs> like you know what i mean like you don't see like like I, I mean barcelona has like the old school ball in theirs but it's not just like a clip art soccer ball that just you know that they work so hard yeah. and, and create to create this and thankfully i mean we're seeing more teams rebrand and i think a lot of them you know are, are, are doing a pretty decent job at it but um sure. just like being like uh, it's not only is it limiting but it's like just so like Hey, you know, like we're a soccer team, you know, if you didn't know, you yeah. know what I mean? So like, I yeah. think, I think making it so like you can wear an Oakland Roots t-shirt, you know, wherever. And you saw, I mean, like it was everywhere. Like, I mean, Dame Lillard was rocking it. Yes. Um, G-Eazy was rocking right. it. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're wearing it everywhere. You don't have to just wear it. Like, I mean, cause like a jersey, like a soccer jersey is like, you can still wear it anywhere, but it's like less versatile than just, you know, like a t-shirt with, with the brand's totally. name on yeah. it. So. Even in our soccer designs, we try to get more versatile and you know i think this last year 2021 the kit you're wearing um is is the kit that we tried to become a bit more retro in soccer mm. and that helped us kind of establish in a different way 442 covered us and called us the, the coolest coolest club in america which I, I really appreciate it um and you know it's it's challenging the way people think about merchandising and apparel, um, for sure, specifically in the soccer landscape. It's so new, you know, yeah. nowhere I've seen and these guys were probably the only cats that were doing it at a, at a high level and were disturbing the marketplace. And um, I just think that more clubs should be doing it. More clubs shouldn't be limiting their brand identity. Um, you know, we worked with really incredible designers, Matt Wolf, mm -hmm. um, Danny Lukin, um, a whole bunch of local folks, um, Benny Aziz, one of our co-founders, all these guys are like very high level aesthetic design centric people. 
and they're not thinking about a crest that is just going to be like, oh, you know, a clip art of soccer, and, you know, whatnot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how does this turn into a 500 year long identity, you know, and how do people embrace it every day? But you don't also, you also don't have to play the game or understand the game to rock it, you know? And on the flip side to your Barcelona comment, Barcelona is like synonymous, FC Barcelona is synonymous with the city, right? Whenever I hear Barcelona, I think the team. But the, the reality of their club is that they're not just soccer. Like they right. have basketball, right. they have ping pong, right. yeah, tennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the logo might have a soccer ball, but that's not everything. And like mm-hmm. that's the flip side of, of like where they've transcended the meaning of football. Sure. Yeah. Like Pau Gasol, I think, came yeah. out of yeah. the Barcelona, yeah. the Barcelona yeah. Academy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what I mean? It's multi sport. And that's actually the mentality that we have here is how do we become multi sport 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now? So that like the next Lewis Hamilton, black or brown kid, F1 drivers out of Oakland. Like, why not? You know, yeah. we just got to think on that level of ambition. Because if we don't, it's like we're just doing a disservice to this whole project. You know? so. yeah, that's 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 fire, dude. It's crazy, like, yeah. Oakland Roots F one team, like that'd be sick. Branching out, <laughs> yeah. Hell bump, yeah. Bump an E forty on the track. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Shit. People going doing yeah, the thizzle dance. Hypey, hypey juice, hypey <laughs> juice right. to sponsor the, the F one car. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, but um, people I mean, do it. Yeah, dude. people doing we'll the thizzle do dancing. Different. Doing the dizzle dance in the in the, in the outside, it'll be, a, it'll be the first time ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. But um, going back to to some of the um, kind of Bay Area and Oakland, especially uh, natives that that you've been able to to um, not only like get in um, merch, but to actually work with too. I know, um, you know, Marshawn Lynch is, is, uh, I, I think he's, he's part of your guys' investors, um, uh, investor board. Right. And, you know, seeing, right. seeing people like, um, G easy and, and, and Damien Lillard, like, like previously mentioned, but even in like the, uh, that, uh, uh last chance you, the basketball, uh, documentary, I mean, there's that Laney, uh, Laney college where, where y'all play. Um, you know, people were rocking the Oakland Roots uh, tees there. So what was it like just kind of working with some, you know, um, pretty notable uh, figures um, that, that are coming out of Oakland? And um, what yeah. was the, what was like the strategy in, in targeting specific people? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think a lot of this is so A, it's humbling from my perspective personally. Right. I grew up on these people, mm. um, you know, we're a few people removed from each one of these people so they may feel like celebrities but like it's a homies 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 sure. homie, or you yeah. know it's way mm-hmm. closer than you actually think and so it's humbling to see that full circle happen in my life right to be able to work with these guys um it a lot of this just happened organically though right like i think a lot of the people may have thought that we like explicitly targeted you know an influencer or a celebrity from oakland quite frankly that's not how it went like we uh you know i had gotten in touch with uh muyagi who's like friends with dame and moo is uh, dude that's like one or two friends removed from my friends like i've gotten to know him love the guy a good friend of mine and like he was like, yeah, let's toss name some stuff. You know, he, he rocks with the roots because he follows Oaklandish. And then when he mm. followed Oaklandish, he saw the root stuff and then engaged and gave us a follow back. And it was super organic, just tossed him some stuff and he wore it on the during the playoffs. And yeah. that was just like massive, right? So again, this goes back to my actually opening comments about people that are from the town right. are not afraid to rep it. They're very proud of where they're from and they're happy to put everyone and anyone on their back, you know. You see modern, um, recent examples of this of like Juan Toscano Anderson and yeah, yes. others that are like mm-hmm. heavy Oakland, you know, and they just put the town on their back in a way that's special, you know, um, and meaningful. There's others, you know, GEZ's um, crew. Like, uh, again, my cousin is a big DJ in the Bay Area. Everyone knows everyone. And mm-hmm. like, we got connected and he came out to a game and showed love and uh, performed. Um, We've had Zion I out there at a game. We've had the Grouch. We've had, uh, my God, like, it just, the, the list doesn't stop, man. <laughs> Mr. Fab had pulled up. Oh, wow. Um, 
at some point, even Matt Barnes came to a game just to check it out and kicked it with us in the press box. Um, and it happens by way of word of mouth. And I'll tell people that the biggest asset and tool that in marketing that exists is word of mouth. It is not paying right, 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 for celebrity right. endorsement. It is not paying to uh, create a paid advertisement. It is just creating good shit and creating authentic things that connect to communities that tell good stories. And then slow, slowly but surely, like somehow, some way it reaches one person or next and things start to happen, you know? And Marshawn um, is big for us, man. I mean, he is, how do I say this? I mean, if there's there's a cat that's Oakland, it's him. Yeah, yeah right, right. You know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, on right. many levels. Um, and, you know, I look up to him a lot personally. Um, you know, represents a lot of our values, obviously, because we mimic those values. And, you know, it, it had to be him to be our first kind of like sure. person in ownership that is the front-facing celebrity influencer, local connection face. Um, and it was perfect, man. I, I'm a firm believer that it's not about, you know, having a seat at the table, but having a plate to eat as well. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of getting local uh, people of color um, involved in ownership in a meaningful way that isn't just like, you know, hey, can you wear this jersey? And that's it. It's like meaningful yeah. and it's integrated. Yeah. And he's a part of decision making and his, his crew is in it, you know, providing feedback and, you know, all this stuff. And so, I'm excited to do more of it. Um, I'd love to think about how we can bring in um, the women of, of Oakland in mm -hmm. the Bay Area now that we have Oakland Soul. Um, my my vision has always been to work with Zendaya on something. So if anyone listening has a you know, has <laughs> right. to get to her now that she's blown up, um, that would be amazing. But um, yeah, man, I, it's, it's love and we just – want everyone from the town and everyone from the Bay Area to feel like this is theirs. Um, whether you're a celebrity or not, this is this is your club. So yeah. Yeah, when Sandea gets here, I'm trying to get there too. Make a drive up there real quick. <laughs> Just as a fan of the team. <laughs> this will never been to a game <laughs> Hey, I heard you were coming today. Rocking a rock, rocking a Warriors jersey instead of right. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm straight. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm gonna be Oakland down. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> oh man, that's right uh, yeah. Um, uh, so so going from um, a lot of the off pitch stuff that that, that um, you you do at the club, um, I want to move towards the on pitch. Obviously, you know you mentioned um, started out in Nisa, now playing USL Championship. Um, what was that jump up uh, to, to the second division like? Um, and, um, you know, how, like, did that discussion happen? And, you know, what went, what was behind, you know, the, the, the jump up? Yeah, great question. So uh, we played our first wind of games in Nisa in 2019. That was our inaugural season. Right. August 31st, I turned 30 years old. It was my birthday wow, on that day. Wow. Our first game ever. I remember driving down the street, listening to Telegraph Ave by Childish Gambino. Um, and I was on Telegraph Ave uh, in downtown. And, you know, he talks about being 30 in Oakland. Wow. And I, I will never forget that moment, man. Like the most insane feeling of life you can want to have. Bucket list type shit, right? First game, thousands of people. You're just blown away and humbled. And again, this is why I keep saying like, I will never stop working my ass off because of the, 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 like the amount that the town has given to the club. And we've, we've, we're going to try to give that every ounce of that back and we're going to work as hard as possible. But we had four games in the initial, initial year. There were two friendlies, two um, against two NISA clubs. Our first actual season was in 2020. Yeah. We had two games, maybe three. I got to look back. And then the pandemic hit. And oh, yeah, we thing. shut down everything. So, bro, like the entirety of 2020 from February through the end of the year, we were not playing the game and it was our first full year in existence. Right, right. So we played a tournament in Detroit 
um, which was like the NISA Challenge Cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something I like forgot that. Exactly. Yeah, I remember that. I remember um, that. Yeah, and we made it to the championship game against Detroit City. Right, another mm-hmm. kind of pinnacle moment. Right. I'm like, wow, like in our first season, we're in the championship game, and we're just a t-shirt company, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're playing Detroit City. This is kind of crazy because we looked at them and saw them as an example club, you know. So it was a, another humbling moment. We lost that game. Um, you know, we had our off season. During the off season, the there was a person in the Bay Area in the East Bay area that owned the license for USL. We never even thought it was possible Mm -hmm. to go to USL. We just never, we didn't care. We were just like, we're happy where we're at. We're continuing to thrive. We're going to do well. Let's keep building, you know? Um, And we were excited about NISA and all the amazing independent things that they were creating for Pathways. And then we got a, a, a phone call and a ring that like, there may be a potential that this, license in the east bay area will become available and lo and behold dude like three four weeks later ish we were able to acquire the usl championship license for the east bay area Mm -hmm. which i would have never in my wildest dreams had even thought that that would have been a possibility but our investor group said hey if the town wants this and they want to go up we're going to do it locally everyone wants to see Oakland win and be successful and grow. So we did it and we were able to um, harness that much excitement to make that jump from about August, September, October of 20, I forgot exactly the months, 2020 to to early 2021. We, we made the transition and with the transition, there was levels, man. It was like your broadcast had to level Mm -hmm. up Mm -hmm. your, Standards had to level up, right. your you know, in stadium experience had to level up, you know, training and um and requirements for you know standards in terms of what you provide to players has to level up. It was a complete just you know change for the organization. Yeah. And with that came a lot of changes internally, right? Came a lot of changes, you know, uh externally facing. And you know. We kick off our 2021 season on Juneteenth. It was important for us to wow. have our game on Juneteenth to make sure that people were aware of our efforts in Oakland as it relates to, you know, black joy mm-hmm. and happiness and uh, justice, especially after um, a horrific 2020 and, you know, enduring the murder of, of George Floyd and, yeah. and Breonna Taylor mm-hmm. and several others. We use our platform to be a voice for change and we wanted to allow for 2021 to open up in a way that was meaningful. I don't know if you guys know the story about that first game, but the first game got canceled. Right. Though. Because of the, something yeah. with the stadium, right? It's something with the stadium. Yeah. So five, 6,000 people show up. It's a sold out game. We got Guapale in the stadium. We got Marshawn out there. We got legends in the building and Sack comes out. Um, and the players did not want to play on the condition pitch. Mm-hmm. And at the time, we had 2,000 some hundred panels that like connected to create the pitch because it, the field that Laney wasn't wide enough. And oh, so, okay. and it has football lines. So yeah. We had to lay our own foundation. We had another field that was on the way on a boat. Um, and there was a tremendous delay because of the pandemic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> on supply yeah. chain issues. Yeah. Wow. And so it didn't arrive prior to the season. But we, you know, got a kind of nod and a green light to move forward with this paneled idea, laid it out. We played with the panel pitch in Nisa, brought in Juarez and Zacatepec from Mexico. And it was no issues. <laughs> but, you know, leveling up, this is what I'm talking about, the right. levels. Right. Um, it was not good enough to play on. The condition of the field was not suitable. Um, by referees, by the opposing team, and the league made the decision to, out of the safety of the players, um, to call off the match, right? Um, and, you know, it was just devastating, bro. I remember, like, thinking about, damn, all this hard work in the first game out of the fucking pandemic and all this shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and we're trying to do it in the USL, and it gets pulled. And, I, you know, Mike, our co-founder, 
Tommy, our co-founder, we have to make an announcement in the stadium that the game is canceled and fans have to leave the stadium. And man, it was just a tough, tough moment, man. And we couldn't play a handful of games at Laney because the pitch wasn't up to standard. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for this new field to come. The new field finally arrives and our whole staff is gluing this together and oh. we're bleeding from our knees and, you know, making this cross the line. And finally, second half of the year, we got it together and uh, we're able to have a game at home again. And uh, it was a challenging ass year, man. So I'd say tough, tough, tough year, but we were able to then make it to the Western Conference semifinals, yeah. you know, in our first yeah. year. Of, uh, of the USL championship and beat all odds and our players were going through crazy circumstances and they leveled up and stepped up. I mean, bro, if, if Netflix could do a documentary, <laughs> they should have done it on our shit. Cause I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> the past three years have been insane. wild, And that's, that's the story. Bro. Yeah. So talk about some of those struggles a little bit, because I mean, obviously going up a division, for any club, there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, like you mentioned, whether it's infrastructure, training, um, you know, finding players. Right. Um, there's a lot of struggles that come with that. Um, but being so, like, it was like your second full season as a, as a professional club, like, um, and I know right. there was like, you, you, uh, I don't know how much in depth you want to get into it, but there's like some some internal, um, you know, the conflicts with 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 some of the the, the, mm -hmm. the front office. Um, but what, like, what were some of those uh, challenges that that you underwent, and how did you kind of um, overcome that? And what was it like, you know, just being so much in like the club's, I mean, inf infancy to to deal with mm -hmm. all those? Yeah, I mean, this goes back to my point about the more levels there are, the more you progress, um, the the needs or requirements for existing in that new area or new space are different, mm -hmm. right? And so with that comes different circumstances, different needs, different, you know, skill sets. And not, not everyone is meant to be at every level. You know, I might not be here in the next five. I might not be here in the next 10. I just don't know. But when you encounter those hurdles or encounter those moments and you need to, to pivot and adjust in the, in the spirit of ensuring you live up to your purpose mm -hmm. right and you live up to your the expectation from the community sometimes it means difficult decisions and um we've had to make a few of those make a few of those in our in our history and though mm -hmm. uncomfortable especially with people that have been here since the beginning um my philosophy is you have to respect people and give them credit where they're due especially when they contribute at an early stage. Uh, and that's exactly what we do with all of, all of everyone who contributes to Roots, no matter if you're a co-founder or um, a game day part-time staff or anyone, right? It, you're contributing to the bigger vision. But when you're contributing, it doesn't mean that you're going to be contributing forever, right? Mm -hmm. That's just the, the, the nature of growth. That's the nature of the game. And we have to preserve our purpose and our identity through those levels. And so... It's very difficult, man. It's mm -hmm. very difficult being uh, pursued and sued and going through litigation. It's very difficult having the first game canceled and dealing with all of those complexities in your first year, yeah, right? right? But I think that at the end of the day, when you realize the bigger picture and you know that, sure, some of this pain is temporary, um, the long game vision, man, of existing for the town is a bigger thing than just myself or any one of the staff. Oakland Roots, Oakland Soul is not Idris, it's not Tommy, it's not Mike, it's not Benny, it's not any of the co-founders. It's Oakland's. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. to get that straight, like this shit lives bigger, way bigger than any of our egos. Right. And, um, you know, some cope with this, some don't. And that's just the reality of life in the, in the world in which we operate in. But I've said it before, I said it again, man, I'm not one to like conflict. I like to operate in the space that, mm -hmm is about peace and love and yeah. happiness and helping each other and um i'm just surely glad that a uh, very, very difficult year of 2021 is over with and we're putting up measures and protections in place to ensure that you know we don't we don't put ourselves in these positions again and you know we're, we're focused on creating an asset for the community that lasts a long time you know that's the most important yeah all right, just to change it, change it up a little bit. I know you played. You played. You, you were recruited for at a D one. 
um, ever thought about saying, you know what? Hey, let me show you guys. I'm not only the guy in the front <laughs> office. I can play a little bit. Don't don't try me because I, I I will suit up real quick. Bruh. I mean, <laughs> shit. I, 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 yeah, I don't want to get out of pocket. I definitely, I definitely have the itch and the love and the passion to do it, man. That's why it's so hard to be on this side now, the front office, because like playing my whole life, I'm just like, it's it's the best game in the world and it makes me so happy. And so now that I'm on this side, it's super difficult, right? Like to keep keep it divided and, and whatnot. But um no nah, man, these this is a whole nother level. So like I've played my whole life and et cetera, but there's a very clear reason why I'm on the I'm on this side and not on that side. <laughs> yeah. These guys are are dead ass. They're dedicated man. They're professionals. They they train very hard. This is their everyday life. Um, and they're cut for it, man. They're definitely cut for it. So um, the pace is crazy. The pace is faster. Um, I'm happy playing street ball, G. And I'll suit up. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll suit up here and there, you know, to, to to show up and you know make sure people know I still got that shit. But All other right. than that, other than that, man, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> what, what club did you grow up playing for? Because uh, you said from Oakland. Um, th- what did you grow up playing club soccer there? Yeah, so I, I was born in Oakland. I was raised throughout the whole Bay Area, man. So, like, I've floated around the Central Valley for a core of my life. I've uh, come back to the East Bay Area, been in the town again for now some, a couple years plus. I mean, it's – I've been everywhere. So, I played for a range of clubs, man, from, uh, gosh, a club in, in – the Central Valley, all the way to a team in Sacramento oh, wow. that my dad would drive me to because uh, it was called River City Boca, and they were they were like state cup champions a couple years in a row. I uh, played for Davis uh, Legacy for a year, and all, all of this was like strategic and tactical to like get myself exposure, so that my dad would drive me hours, bro, every day to practice. My mom would drive me, and all of this led to me being recruited to Davis. Had a couple of very nasty ligament issues and injuries with two ankles. Mm. Um, really inhibited my ability to like heal and play at a high level. Um, was in and out, um, and then I had to decide, man. Like sophomore year, after finally getting past these injuries, like do I pursue the education route and just focus on my studies, or keep one foot in the door? And then at that point, dude, like two years in with the injuries and ankle problems, like you're thinking you know what, like, it's tough, like working your way into a roster and, you know, squeezing your way into the program is tough. And so I decided to focus on the studies. And um, I still played um, semi-professional here in, in Oakland. I played for the uh, the Bay Area Ambassadors. We're huh. based out of Raimondi Park in West Oakland. Uh, and that was like the OG, that was like the highest level team Oakland has ever had. Right. Like, at least while I'm alive, I know you can mm-hmm. go back to, like, the stompers during the, God, I don't know, NASL days or okay. something like that. It was mm-hmm. way back in the yeah, days. Yeah. Uh, it was like when Pele was playing for the Cosmos. Right, you know? right. Uh, but from in my existence, I was the highest level in Oakland playing at a, uh, Raimondi Park. And I was able to do that, you know, and that was an amazing experience. And um was on the national team pool. And, and I had to hang them up, bro. I had to make it. I had to pay the bills, bro. <laughs> You know yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I tried to play last week. I, I played a little bit of college soccer. I tried to play last week. Now I'm still hurting. I'm like, man, I can't bro, do this no more. I can't do this no more. Tweaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, fuck that. Wake I, up at I 3 in the morning. Shit, me too. Yeah. Wake up at 3 in the morning, you get a random cramp. Like, wait, let me get water. <laughs> yeah. That's not fun. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, all right, man. Well, um, you know, we'd love to be here. We could be here for for forever. It seems like, but um, you know, I don't know, respect that you got you got some stuff going on too. So uh, before we wrap things up, you know, we like to, to close things out with with uh, Julio putting uh, the guest on the hot seat a little bit. He's gonna throw some some questions your way. Um, yes, sir. Uh, and then and we can finish from there. All right. So first, we'll start off with thank you. Start one, bench one, cut one. E forty, too short, Mac Dre. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna do this for the bay. Uh, <laughs> start one, bench one, cut one. Yes. God damn, bro. Uh, I'm gonna start Mac Dre. 
I'm on bench too short. I gotta cut you for the oh man. Uh, it's, uh, oh it's, man. You forty water? It's the it's the Oakland it's the Oakland connection. Right. It's the, I mean Mac Dre. I mean Mac Dre is Mac Dre, so you gotta mm-hmm. you got he birthed the whole movement, man. Right. And then you know, too short. It's the Oakland connection, bro. I just had if I have to make the the, the <laughs> you know the decision, it's gonna edge on on that connection, man. I gotta go short, short dog. All right, so I, I think I know where he's gonna go with yeah. this next question. Uh, better, better dance song, uh, uh, Mac Drake's Thizzle Dance or E40's uh, Gas Break Dip Dip. Oh man, Thizzle Dance, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Thizzle Dance all day. Did I, yeah. Yeah. All right, all uh, day. better basketball player from Oakland, uh, Gary Payton or Dame Dalla? <laughs> Bro, you gonna give me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one. No. <laughs> that might be the first question that's yeah, too hot to answer. To that skip, might be the first right. too hot the questions. They both can talk some trash, though. They both can talk some trash, though. Actually, I'll frame it this way. I think that the glove and Gary Payton opened the door for Oakland Ballers in a way that was legendary. Mm. So, like, I put GP up there for sure. Dame Dalla, one of my fam, fam, uh, favorite players to date right now. Different generation, different eras. Right. But I, I are on the side of respecting my elders and my OGs. So I say without Dame, or without GP, there ain't no Dame. And, and I'm pretty sure you'd probably say the same. So fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> I'm in trouble for that. <laughs> All right. So let's, just, let's ease that up a little bit. But best, best place to go to in Oakland as a visitor? Oh, man. There is no shortage of places. Um, sheesh. So much beauty, man. Um, I think if, you, if this is the first time you're out here and you've never been here, um, I, would, I would start out at Lake Merritt. It's like the most generic. Like, that's like the safe, the safe one. Right. Like, if you've mm-hmm. never been to Oakland, hit Lake Merritt on a Sunday and just vibe out. Just like walk the lake, meet people that are are vendoring up out there that are barbecuing enjoy the music um and then stroll out to downtown enjoy food enjoy drink um but man there is no shortage from you know going to like the the nature element of it with redwood regional to then tapping into the streets and doing the black liberation walking tour in west oakland learning about the historical contextual things that exist there learning about the murals um you know, stopping by the the Black Panther Museum mm. and learning about the history of Huey P. Newton and everything that the Black Panther Party has done uh, in the town and around. I mean, man, catch a concert at the Fox and Paramount, uh, go to the Oakland Museum. Uh, dude, there is, is no shortage of, of things. Check out the Oakland Symphony. Yeah, man. I mean, the list goes on and on. All right. Uh, Best place to go eat in Oakland. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'd say check out any range of taco trucks on international. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to see who's better. Who's better. The yeah, taco the taco no, LA, LA, for I mean, sure. We, we got some good tacos. Like too. Yeah. We're going to have to do a segment. Um, my, my personal favorite is Guadalajara. Guadalajara um, out in the Fruitvale. Um, uh, yeah, man. I mean, MacArthur, which is now known as, um international um yeah it's just there's a plenty plenty of of wide diverse varieties of street food that i would just recommend checking out all right la- last one tequila or cognac <laughs> man you guys got some good husky ones <laughs> I, I go cognac man it's, nothing can beat the henny yeah, yeah. there we go, there we <laughs> go. <laughs> the reason i asked that question is because i saw uh, marshawn lynch interview and he goes yeah, I was an Oakland baby to walk into every party with a bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Henny. I, I'm trying, I got to get a Henny and Oakland Beach partnership going here soon. So. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, um, let's make but, it happen. But a close second is tequila, man, for sure. I'm on, I'm on that, uh, the Añejo. 
um, mm. for sure. Mm. Man, this is this is a lot of fun. Really appreciate you taking the time. Um, you know, we're, we're big fans of everything that you've accomplished. You know, we're, we're going to keep an eye out for for. Um, I'm sure what's what's only going to be bigger and better things for the roots. Um, but uh, you know, it, it once again it was it was just an absolute pleasure for for um, yeah, honestly, talking to you right and, and whatnot. Thank but, you guys. Hopefully, yeah, we can yeah. make it to a game soon. Yeah, we gotta uh, get really to go. Love is family. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna be down in LA, hopefully for FootyCon. So I'm gonna tap in. Okay, with you guys. oh for we'll sure, connected definitely. Um, but you know, we're we're vibing. We're trying to create the connection of and in touch with the Venice Beach guys as well. Trying to create oh. something, a connection between us. But yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, hearing me out. I've talked a lot, <laughs> but um, you know, when people give me the opportunity to talk about the town and my story, you know, I don't shy away. So oh, yeah. I, I thank you guys very much for the space. And um, as family, anytime you guys want to come out to a game, we're more than happy to host y'all. Um, Thank you. Do a podcast from the game or something. Dude, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be great. amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ooh. man. Uh, for for Julio Monterosa, Adris Arganawal, I'm Ramsey Abushala. Thank you for listening. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, you've been listening to the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. We'll see you guys next time. And for my friends, thanks. Yay! <laughs> how to do it? How to do it? <laughs>